Good morning, and it is the Crypto Day morning. Today's day, 1st of December 2018. Good weekend as well. It's a Saturday. A little later today, but it's the weekend, 9.51 a.m. Eastern Time, minus 5 UTC. All bets, trades of the like, within one's own risk and uh, their own reward. Within Bitcoin, continuation of trading within this 18 average of lows it's a declining one and within the mathematics of fibonacci as the 150 lows which was around here and the 20,000 highs had a 23.6 percent down move at around 6300 and change so let's just draw a line here Okay, that works well. And again, at around 3,100 is the 38.2%. This is exponential Fibonacci, high divided by low, the differential of the move, 20x, 4x, whatever the move is. And of course, in this case, that was over a 100x move. So it takes a move x that it had, expo exponent. Now from here, up to here, that has to go 73.6% of the way. So this is exponent 0.7364. This one here is exponent 0.618. And then I multiply it again by the low, and that's how the numbers are calculated. Within Fibonacci, more times than not, it is spectacular. And when it becomes very spectacular, as long as it's playing within its movement, you can usually expect that Fibonacci will continue to do so moving forward. And when there was support like this here, 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 and how it just grinded this level. This was a huge, huge move. So I'm 100% expecting that 3,000 is going to most likely be hit. As it plays now, if this is a bottom and price action starts to go higher, this would be one of the rare Fibonacci misses. More times than not on the breakdown. This is going to hit with an exact or a pierce below hit and a pierce above. And this is a very noticeable, decent pierce above right now it is not so common, at least within the cryptocurrency markets. So as the daily chart plays out within the 18, always knowing that when you have these big moves down, it's hard to trust these rallies. So anything that gets to the 18 lows, 18 highs or even piercing above the 18 highs. And in this case right now, 4,700 as this is declining, is the area of the a small move above it. It's really got to get above 47, 48 for me to even consider that there's a decent chance that this thing can uh, have a decent chance of breaking past 5,000 for the short term time frame. Short term, decent moves occurring. Hourly time frame, here's the spot where you had this rally from the 35 low up to 43 and change. And then on uh, yesterday's session in the morning, it had its breakdown and it consolidated all day yesterday at around the uh, high 3900 area. Well, just at the uh, six or five hour time frame, it had a significant move. And look at how it's been correcting very nicely so far. S extended from the 18 average previous area where it, where it came from is around 4,000. But it's looking as if it doesn't need to do any of that. It may not even need to have a full correction through time. Thus, it could explode without even an 18 average hit. And if you do so, I'd be looking for a fast move up to about 43.50. Looking at this even more short term, this is where it gets very interesting because you have the spot of the rise higher correcting spectacularly through time. It has made a move to the 18 average of lows. We can see now it's got to make this move getting above the 18 highs and even big above this level of resistance. But breaking past, as we can see this high in around 41.80, Getting past the low 4200s above that should set up a move to make it for a decent, very quick leg higher. Breaking down below this supported about 4100 in low change, 4110 should have a fast move possibly down to, uh, well, through the 4000s to 4000 ish. So a 100 point move breaking 4100 would not be a surprise. So that is the uh, long term and short term outlook for Bitcoin in this video. I will now want to do such within Theta as it had a wild, wild move yesterday. And we'll look at it within the daily. And in yesterday's session, this is 
huge. It's not not uncommon for these crypto markets. So when I'm talking about theta, I'm pretty much talking about every altcoin when I say this. For it to when it's ready to go, and sometimes you just can't figure it out. Yesterday I showed you what all the time frames looked before the rally started. To me, showing nothing that it was about to go. It just went. And it's spectacular when it can just even come up to areas like 2300, which would be a move in itself of like 70-80%. And that would even be more common, especially within today's market dynamics, when coins have these types of move. You're in a situation where it was a downtrend and it's been sideways ever since the uh, late August period within the range bound market of 1000 to about 1500. So it's broken out of that dynamic downtrend, sideways trend. What was the statement made yesterday? Huge statement of breaking, making a move to the upside normally in markets. And in cryptos, it's becoming normal to have moves like this. But you have the down move like this, very normal sideways moves. These candles are very normal. You have this level of resistance. When you break it, you're going to have a decent move, probably up to around here, where, of course, it beat it. It's probably going to take between 3 to 15, 40 periods to occur, but closer to 10 to 15. Not... A fraction of one which was the case in here but that's been the market movements which is a reason when you have these moves why you want to protect your profits I have read on multiple different books and internet articles the same thing that markets will go way overextended way under will go way lower and way higher than where pretty much quote unquote should be both short term and long term so when you have these moves, this was way, way, way overextended. But they happen, and that's the nature of the game. So having sell orders in here, being able to buy back them instantly, to me is important. That's why within my strategy, I keep on looking to buy and sell these things all the time because I expect a lot of these up and down choppy markets. So when markets have these big moves, lower and higher, remember that that's just the way it is. 20,000 at the time last year for Bitcoin was way overextended. And if this thing goes anywhere below 3,000, it's going to be the same thing again to the downside. That's just the way markets work. And of course, I'll talk about 1,000 Bitcoin next when it comes to three. And I should say if... But within that matter, let's again move on to theta. So you have that extended move. Whenever that's the case, it's always important to hold and stay above key areas where it came from or else it's going to be making a failed move. So if it's a real move, it becomes very, very rare for this market to hold, to not hold and stay above that key area, which is about 15 so yeah, maybe it might pierce below to 1380 or even a quick move to 1300, but it would probably come back relatively fast. If it's able to hold and stay above this and then start to develop some sort of good bullish activity, just like when markets go down really big and fast, it needs time to heal. Well, polar opposite, same thing here. When it has these big moves, it's going to need time to transition itself or basically heal again into a bullish maneuver looking at this on a short term time frame three hours and I'm going to be keeping on going shorter and shorter but you have that fast moving like one or two periods it retraces back fast so you go from like 1200 to like 36 that's about a 3x move then you go 3,600 down to like 1,800, so you lose half of its value relatively in its in its in this period in itself. Single hour time frame. It's just been now correcting, consolidating amongst this area, so markets find that overextension value. So now in the short term, it's got to discover and find fair value, and it looks to be doing so in and around 2000 range at this point again holding and staying above about 1500 is going to be super super important 
And then when you look at a trading perspective, here's a spot, and I want to do even the one minute time, we'll do three minute time frame for this. When you have these moves that occur. Again, markets are ready to go. Whoa, do they just ever break out? So this move in itself is impressive going from uh, in the 1200 range to 1500. That was a gain of like 20%. And then you have your resistance that you're establishing because within one, two, three hits at round 15. And then it has in time 112 in the morning to 218. So it takes close to a little more than that of an hour from the last point to have a little bit of a price correction. So resistance established big. And of course, this is not, this drawing was drawn in for where support was or resistance was before. So this was already big resistance even before that as it was. So then you have a little bit of resistance here. We can see you're coming back to the 18. So you know as a trader, when this move happens, as I state, oh, so if you're looking at this and I'm saying to myself, I need this to have a clear break above 1513. If you thought 14 points was good enough and you're like, okay, buy 1527. Next period, you're like, oh boy. Beautiful move. I mean, one period. It does that. And then it just continues. Like, this is monstrous move and this is going to happen now and again you can never predict that the breakout is going to do that rather it's going to be a nice upside move and holy wow this is the nice move so you protect your profits and in a situation as a trader generally speaking if i'm going to be looking well back in here if I'm trading this and I'm selling at 1509, I'm like, okay, I want to buy back at say 1400. So I sell at 15, I want to buy back at 14. That's a differential of 100 basis points. That's about seven, eight percent. And normally you play for less percentage moves, but because at this point, the market had great play, you can afford to, instead of getting a 4% pullback that you might be used to, now you can go for even larger ones. Okay, yada, 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 so then, you're going to have all of your plethora of sell orders hit. And however your strategy is played out, it's a wonderful thing when this happens. So now you look at this, you're like, oh, wow, where do you want to buy back at? You know that if this is the top, you could easily get 28 and lower, as you obviously already witnessed. And if this goes to 5,000, you know it could go to like 32, 33, 34. If this goes to 20,000, you know it can go down to 6 or 7 on a big move. So you play the volatility. So now you're like, I don't want to buy anything below 2,800. I'm not buying yet. And then you can see here that on this period, you're going to have your buy order start to hit because it went below 2,800 as this particular low was 2666. So 2800 hit, maybe you have a buy order at 2675 that hit. Okay, you put sell orders up top, but oh, instead you get a bunch more buy orders hitting. And you put more sell orders in, and they don't hit. Sometimes they will, sometimes they don't. Instead, all you could be doing here is buying back. But when you think about the dynamics of such, if you sold 100 here at, say, 3,000, and now you're looking to buy it back now at 2,200, if you sold 100, you can buy back like 150, 160, 170, easy. Okay. Love the market. Or 140, easy, whatever. Now, here's a spot here where your market goes from 1,900 up to 24. Myself, I was selling up in here. I think. No, I tried to, s I missed the sell, I think. This was 7 in the morning. No, I didn't get that sell. And then the market continues to go down. But here's a spot where the market had corrected normally. So you could be back at the point where, say normally on every day level, you're looking for even 5% moves. So at 1900, you'd be looking to sell at 2000 
Well, now you're back in business again. And then in here, decent size move. But moving this again to the 15 minute, just because that was um, long enough. For me, I sold everything up there. I bought back at 2080. So I bought more all the way down to 1900. I, I, yeah, down in here. But this rally here, I had about three more, three or four more sell orders hit, bought, and I've been buying ever since. But it's a way of accumulating profits. And mathematically, I have a three level system for my trading on Binance. I'll talk about that in just a bit, but before I do that, if this thing corrects successfully, in here and you start to see it going up and it's able to break through this uh, level of resistance up in here I wouldn't be surprised if this thing gets to and breaks 10,000 I would expect to I have a price objective at about 11,000 breaking past 4,000 where it wouldn't surprise me five six seven eight nine days if that's a point where it goes like 12,000 and then maybe it pulls back to five or six type of market movements I expect. So I want to be selling at those levels and buying back and just accumulating coins. But within such, the way I plan on doing such is everything below 4,000 to me is an area of extremely low prices. So I don't want to profit Bitcoin when I trade. So if I'm selling like I have been, if for every one unit that I sell of Bitcoin that I get back, or I want to buy one unit back. So if I'm buying back 20% lower, and say I sold for every 10 that I sell, I'm looking to buy back 12 more. Whatever that price happens to be. So if it was 100, maybe it might work out to 123 that I end up buying back in a way of trying to increase my amount of theta. And I got several hundred more now back because of what just happened. In the sense of, okay, so sell 75 here, buy 89 back or 91 back, which is what I've been doing many a times. So 15 here, 22 here, 17 here has added up to well over four or 500. Free coins, 500, yeah, easy. That I've been making from that strategy. Now, in situations where prices go much higher, from about 5,000 in, in a quick move to 12, but overall even to about 18, I want to play profit both game. So before I was selling 100, and that exact amount of Bitcoin that I received, I could use to buy 123 of at my lower price. In a spot like that, I want to profit both. So I'm going to buy back somewhere around 112, somewhere around the middle during the price targets of, again, uh, breaking above 5,000 to about 18,000, 20,000, even 25. So I want to get like a little bit of free theta, a little bit of free Bitcoin. And then if this thing goes extremely high, 30, 40, 50,000 plus, then one, I'm going to be looking to sell a good chunk at like 50, 75% off. But two, at least for short term trades, only for short term trades rather, if I'm selling 100 coins at say, 50,000 Satoshi, then maybe when I buy back at 40,000 or 38,000, I want to buy 100 again. So comp profiting just the Bitcoin. And then that's the uh, plan. So you have low and then medium again. So if the markets go up in here, I'll play the high game up well up above here. If price action falls from say 50,000 to like 
and it, it could do that, 5,000. Then as it starts to break down below 15,000, I'm going to try to accumulate a lot more because again, if it goes straight up and I'm used to getting like looking to buy back myself at 20% moves, at least within this current volatility, 20, 25% moves in here, I was playing 9% moves, but I'm going to be looking to say, okay, I'm going to sell a whole bunch at say 42,500 and I'm going to put a buy order in. I might buy a quarter of it. If I'm selling a forty, a quarter of it at say thirty thousand, another quarter of it at say twenty thousand, another quarter of it at say fourteen thousand, and another quarter of it at say eight thousand, and play it that way. Or well, in in that really, no, I would probably just two thirds of it. Okay, two thirds of what I sell, I'd put in buy orders. One third of what I would sell, I'd move to my hardware wallet, buy some silver, go on a vacation, use it as spending form that way. Because when you get big, big gains, the markets do well. Then you get to the situation where you want to protect your profits on your overall portfolio perspective, which means for me, using cryptos for buying goods, including that of precious metals, which is another investment class and then doing so to hedge against Bitcoin, thus buying US fiat currency to buy back cheaper, all of those type of defensive mechanisms in protecting my portfolio. At least that's what I like to do and such. And I didn't plan on making a 22 plus minute video, but that's what I did. My plan, and this is my second time I did this. I did a 14 minute video and I'm like, man, I could do this better in like eight or nine, 10 minutes. And when I finished Bitcoin, I did Bitcoin three and a half minutes faster on this one. I'm like, oh, off to a great start. First for two, three minutes of theta, just fine. I didn't expect to talk about all this extra trading strategy, but that's why instead of labeling this Bitcoin and theta, I'm going to label this Bitcoin theta and that's some trading strategy. Thank you for tuning in. You've made it to the end. That's a, an accomplishment just right then and there. But yeah, moves like this protect your profits. So for me, risk reward management is job number one. And when the markets are doing all of this, I call that reward management. Have yourself a magnificent day and weekend.